Uh, good evening, guys. Welcome back to Palos. Happy to have you here, as always. Um, many of you will remember that over a year ago, in March of 2021, last year, we covered a story concerning the uh, horrifying, like, tragic tale of 32-year-old Monique Munoz, who was on her way home from work after a hard day uh, and was hit by a Lamborghini Urus, uh, reportedly at over 100 miles an hour, driven by a 17-year-old son, then 17-year-old son, of real estate magnate James Curry. Now, unfortunately, guys, uh, Monique Munoz did not survive the encounter, and there was uh, an enormous amount of internet rage over some of the things that happened right after that occurred. For instance, people were extraordinarily upset that uh, reportedly the Lamborghini Urus was given to uh, then 17-year-old son uh, as a birthday gift, and people sort of questioning why in the world you would give your, your son a extraordinarily high-powered SUV as one of his first cars ever. Other people getting very upset with the fact that there were a number of social media posts, which uh, I can't seem to find anywhere now that other than people that have taken screenshots of, um, insinuating that there was sort of a racing atmosphere between uh, James Corey and his son. If I had to narrow it down in terms of what I thought people were most upset about uh, as this sort of uh, incident progressed over the course of a couple months, it would be this. Um, Curry, the son, pleaded guilty to vehicular manslaughter with gross negligence last April and was sentenced to nine months in juvenile detention. Obviously, uh, people were pretty outraged at that. Uh, from my understanding, that was the maximum sort of amount, or very close to the maximum time that could be given to a juvenile. Uh, but obviously, that's not going to satisfy the people out there. They're like, you know, he got nine months in a juvenile camp, essentially, um, for taking a woman's life in his uh, Lamborghini that was gifted to him from his father. Others on top of this entire situation were very upset that, that the Curry family was seemingly being protected by their massive amounts of wealth, or at least initially there seemed to be like sort of stonewalling from the Curry family. They eventually released a statement on Instagram, uh, sort of uh, sending their deepest condolences over to the Monique Munoz family. Um, but you know, if you go look at James Curry's Instagram, you know, from a week ago, this is the kind of stuff that you see. Him having a great time showing his dogs off in his Lamborghini Aventador SVJ, for instance. So all that sort of said Said, uh, the internet sort of reacted with complete glee and happiness when the latest news concerning this entire case was released just over the last day or so. A number of outlets now reporting that relatives of Monique Munoz have reached an $18 million settlement. With additional quotes saying this, the insurance companies wanted a discount on the value of the life of Monique Munoz, said the family's attorney. It was never about the amount of money my clients would receive for them or for us. It was about making sure that the insurance companies knew they would never get a discount. Additionally, it detailed sort of what exactly the son was going through, saying Brendan Curry was sentenced to nine months in a rigorous juvenile camp and four years of probation after pleading guilty in October. Apparently, this $18.8 million settlement marked one of the largest such amounts for a single plaintiff in a wrongful death case in California history. Them also saying uh, it was never about the money for Munoz's family, it was about the acknowledgement of Brendan Curry's misconduct that resulted in the death of their only daughter and to ensure that he was held accountable, saying today's settlement is a testament to their efforts efforts and is a step closer to justice. They also reached out to the Curry family legal team, uh, and attorneys for the Curry's family did not return a message seeking comment on Wednesday. Now, on top of all the information we've already talked about, guys, uh, there was a video uh, that was released of the actual crash, and as far as I know, that is brand new video. Unfortunately, we can't show it to you guys. It's pretty graphic and extreme, um, but, you know, if you want to get a taste of sort of what exactly happened and sort of, I would imagine, undisputable proof of how fast uh, the son was driving the Urus. I mean, it, it is a, a sobering look at what speeding can actually do uh, when you're going that fast. And to summarize this entire thing, guys, uh, money obviously does not bring back Monique Munoz, um, but given uh, what most people perceived as an extraordinarily light sentence of nine months in a juvenile camp, uh, and from from what I can tell, guys, I think James Curry's Instagram following is up like 900,000 uh, followers over the course of the last year. I want to say he he was at a million even, and I could be wrong on this. I want to say he was at a million even last year. The guy has actually gained 900,000 Instagram followers uh, after gifting the Lamborghini Urus uh, reportedly to his son that caused this crash. It's a weird thing. So many people felt wrong by what happened here, 
And the $18.8 million payout that is supposed to be given to the Monique Munoz family now, I think it makes a lot of people have a little bit more closure here, including the family. But hey, leave your thoughts and comments in the comment section below, guys. I'd love to know if you guys follow the initial story. What do you guys think of the $18.8 million judgment? Um, and has justice been served here? I feel like that's the biggest question here. I feel like in some ways, no, and in some ways, and in some ways, yes, but I'd love to get your perspective on it. So let me know what you guys think about that. And we're gonna jump on to our next story of the day. Moving on guys, uh, on to some incredible hyper and incredible supercar news. I'm really pumped about the next couple stories we have. Uh, number one guys, Shmi's latest video is uh, absolute fire. Uh, Koenigsegg, Yesco, absolute, uh, the full story factory tour and first ride. Um, we all knew this was coming. We knew he was gonna spend some time with Koenigsegg and what an incredible video this was uh, from just going to the factory, actually being in the new Koenigsegg. I mean, good Lord, it was an incredible video from top to bottom. And one of my favorite videos that I've seen from Shmi over the last month or so, and that's really saying something because his content is always at a very high level. Uh, if you love hypercars, if you wanna see what it's like to be in one of the greatest Koenigseggs ever made, make sure to go check out this video, guys. You'll be very happy that you did. But wait, there's more guys. Doug DeMiro's latest video is uh, definitely one of his more entertaining ones and I realize it's not like a quirky or weird car but we're talking about uh, one of the more beautiful McLarens ever made. The video is called the McLaren Elva. It's a crazy two million dollar supercar you can barely use and he sort of jokes about that in the beginning. No windshield, no windows and all that kind of jazz. Um, I love it. He has a lot of respect for this car. He doesn't have it like at the top of sort of the hyper car list for himself at the very end um, but definitely Definitely sort of uh, up there in terms of uh, what this car can bring to the table. Um, you know, be the judge yourself. I think it's worth like over $2 million. It's a crazy car market as it is. I can't imagine what the markups would be on this in the used market right now compared to what people bought them at. Um, would you ever want a car uh, like the Elva, like the Monza from Ferrari uh, without the windshield? It's definitely a very different experience than most supercars. Some people tend to really like it and others just hate everything about it. Let me know what you guys think about it. Do you think the Elva is a beautiful car aesthetically, I'd love to know. Next up guys, uh, more news from Stradman concerning his hypercar, the Bugatti Veyron, and uh, another GTR you might know very well. The video was called, We Went to Mexico in the GTR in Veyron, Finally! I feel like this particular race has been teased for, uh, has it been years at this point? A uh, very, very long time, but obviously it sort of lives up to the hype in my opinion, if you've been waiting for these two cars to go at it. It certainly seems like Stradman is churning out an absolute uh, ton of content. Lately, what do you think of what's going on there? Lately, are you watching other channels? Let me know in the comments below, but the big race has finally happened and most of you guys know exactly what occurred uh, without even watching it, if that makes sense. Next up guys, automotive life. My buddy Lucky has a, a very intriguing video, guys. The video is called The Death of Car Dealerships, Rest in Peace 2025, and details uh, the current state of the automotive world in terms of sales. Uh, a lot of information here, guys. It's definitely sort of a, a longer video for automotive YouTube, but is chock full of sort of insider information. There are very few people that I would say are as knowledgeable about the used car world as Lucky. The guy basically sets up dealerships uh, for a living. Um, I think you guys should watch the video. I think you'll get Gain a new understanding of what's going on and make sure to sub to his channel as well because he always does a fantastic and phenomenal job. And that's gonna do it for today, guys. I realize we've sort of uh, differently focused for a good chunk of today's video. Um, the video that we did initially was a pretty big video for us, like roughly 200,000 views. It made sense to do a follow-up on this, especially considering that most of the initial coverage that we did was of a pretty negative nature, detailing the initial incident with Monique Munoz, uh, talking about the, the many grievances the internet had against the father and the son, the Curry family, um, at least we were able to report something that was was positive today, talking about that, you know, nearly $20 million settlement for the family. Um, obviously, it doesn't bring back a life, but it does go some way in feeling like a victory for that family, which has been through so much over the last year. I just can't even imagine. Additionally, guys, uh, I've been working on something over the last uh, probably like two weeks or so um, that I really can't talk about yet, but I would imagine will be one of the bigger videos that we have ever done on this channel. So make sure to stay tuned for that guys uh it's gonna be a big one for sure and thank you guys for being patient with me i wish i could give you more details but i can't uh but that's all i've got for you guys today so make sure to stay safe sane and healthy we'll see you guys very very soon and uh just have a great start to your weekend guys take care that's all i got bye